Hello, my Nakama Tachi, this is Joy News, here to give you a live update on the current events at Onigashima. This chapter is packed with surprising segments that are rich in interesting developments with potentially very exciting payoffs to come. Today, we present you with a number of news updates ranging from a surprising team-up, groundbreaking discoveries of an ancient reptile, and the unexpected appearance of a character who, despite their previous absence, has as much emotional investment in this raid as any else. All of this and more on Joy News. First up, a live traffic report from the air. Marco and Izo were spotted flying around on Nagashima and it seems that the two are in search of the fire yokai who is currently on a downwards trajectory to the armory beneath the dome which would have disastrous consequences for the island. So it seems that these two white beat pirate commanders may be the ones to deal with the issue. Interestingly, the last time we saw these two in chapter 1030, we also got a brief glimpse at Kawamatsu, but the Kappa Scabbard was nowhere to be seen in this chapter. Back to you! Thanks for the report. Here in the newsroom, we have actually been wondering about the use of the scabbards for the rest of the raid. Apart from Kawamatsu, we also have Denjiro who has long been unaccounted for, and I wouldn't be surprised if Oda actually uses these remaining scabbards to help on this front, as they don't seem to have a clear task at this moment. So dealing with the fire yokai could be a supplementary way to help Momonosuke save mainland Wano should he fail to keep holding the island up. But for now, let's go to weather. It's hot! Fire! Fire everywhere! Uh, that's not weather. Could you please explain a little bit further? Big Mom's huge! Cut. Cut to the on-site reporter. The on-site reporter. So I'm in the second basement, and things really are chaotic. Please, sir, could you explain to us what's happening? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who I'm running away from. People keep coming back to life. The young master isn't on our side anymore. The numbers are here. There's a fire yokai. And since when were there so many world government agents? You can understand the fear of this gentleman as things have really gotten quite confusing here on the grounds. The number, Fuga and Yamato, seem to know each other and whilst it's not known whether this is the case for all numbers, at least Fuga seems to have some sort of relationship with the young master. This could add weight to the speculation of our sources from a few chapters ago who believed Fuga and the other numbers may be the result of some gigantification experiments conducted on the samurais who were captive with Yamato. It's possible they may have even been fed smile devil fruits as it seems that Fuga is some sort of centaurian creature with the lower body of a four-legged creature. A bull, perhaps? Robin and Brooke have also recently just joined us on this second basement floor and so it's possible we may even see an interaction between Yamato and these straw hats. But the interaction which seems to be most important is the face-off between what seems to be two opposing factions of the world government. Sword versus shield? Who will prevail? After fighting each other up to just moments ago, Drake and Apu have now joined sides to take on CP0. It seems your enemy's enemy really may be your friend, and Onigashima may see a feel-good buddy cop film released during the raid. Back to you. Apu really could be a movie star. He has increasingly become very impressive throughout this raid. Are you dressed up as Apu? What? I'm a fan. Check it out! The long arm tribesman is as durable as they come, continuing to get back up from attacks inflicted by notable opponents such as Kid, Zoro, and now a CP0 member who seems to have used Shigan against this musical fighter. He's also exhibiting the most pirate-like trait of the bunch, being very opportunistic and easily switching sides to chase after his own goals. In an arc full of double identities and carried on will, this is a very refreshing characteristic and will be very interesting to see where this leads us. But amidst all this chaos, we've also had some groundbreaking paleontology discoveries. We're going over to you now. Our understanding of the Pteranodon will never be the same after this. Zoro's fight with King has unveiled a previously unknown prehistoric hunting technique of pulling the cranial crest backwards to launch a beam-like attack. And whilst we clarify the abilities of the Pteranodon, I do want to make clear that the fire abilities of King is not related to the reptilian creature. No, no, that is something else. 
Another great discovery is King's use of his wings. This may seem counterintuitive, but pterodons don't actually seem to use their wings to fly, but they serve as a shield-like purpose. This is a great day for us and continues to add to the new dino discoveries we've seen in the raid. This development fits really well with the vibes of One Piece and proves that no one is safe from Oda's comedy, not even the dark, mysterious Yonko's first commander, King. And whilst these discoveries are great leaps in science, they are proving difficulties for our resident swordsman Zoro. Zoro's Kala Sutra attack, which was enough to even cut Kaido, had seemingly no impact on King, who was able to guard Zoro's attack, begging the question of does King have even tougher skills? Skin than Kaido. Perhaps this will be answered alongside all the other questions, as Zoro questioning the strange workings of King's physiology hints that the lore of his Lunarian race may be revealed to us shortly. And while Zoro believes that he must first find out the answers to this in order to defeat Kaido's first commander, it seems there might be another way in which he can gain the upper hand, as his famed sword Enma was seen seemingly responding to the sound of a shamisen playing, now intriguing us all with the question of will we see a black blade Enma soon. The real intrigue, however, surrounds the woman playing the shamisen. Whilst not confirmed, it seems that the popular speculation that Hiyori will make an appearance at Oni Gashima has been fulfilled. Hiyori being here would explain why Enma seemingly reacted to the music as the sword was originally Hiyori's before she gifted it to Zoro. If this woman is indeed Hiyori, whether she's the same mysterious figure who was seen in chapter 1004 remains to be revealed. However, it would set us up for a very exciting possibility of a showdown between Hiyori and the man who killed her father. It's fitting that Zoro was tied into this scene as as both Zoro and Hiyori have declared their intentions to kill Orochi in the past. In true One Piece fashion, a reveal of this size always poses more questions such as how did Hiyori get onto Onigashima and how long has she been here as the island has been floating in the air for quite some time now. In other news, this week's winners for the artwork competition are in. The theme of this week's artwork competition was to draw One Piece characters cosplaying other One Piece characters. And in joint third place, we have Joey the Coffee Addict and Alvi. Joey's merge of Vivi and Carrot make for a gorgeous combination, whilst Alvi's combination of Law and Rosinante makes for a very swoon-worthy heart pirate captain. Law was a very popular character inspiration this week, with second place winner Yamato the Best Nakama's combination of Law and Robin creates perhaps the most intelligent character in One Piece. And for first place, Pukiaki returns to reclaim their throne with a glorious drawing of Bon Clay and Kaido. I name this the Okaido way. Congratulations to all of our winners and a big thank you to all of the participants of the Joy Fleet who submitted their artworks. Thank you all for tuning in to Joy News and please subscribe if you would like to continue being updated on the events at Wano. You can also leave a comment below and even become a Patreon member if you would like to help support independent and reliable journalism. This is Joy News and we'll see you again soon.